Hello, my name is Kyle Walker, and since 2013, I have written and directed five original plays, all premiering at the Dog Story Theater in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Dog Story gave me a place to utilize the things I had learned in college and taught me some things I had neglected to learn in college. And four years ago, mm -hmm. it gave me the opportunity to adapt one of my favorite stories, The Phantom of the Opera. Afterward, I continued to work on the play, learning from my successes and mistakes. To help me with this, I have enlisted the original cast, as well as a few new faces, to present the latest draft of the play in a virtual staged reading. So come, journey back to the Paris Opera House, where I will hopefully learn something new and maybe something I neglected. I encourage you to visit dogstorytheater.com and click on the donate button so that they can continue to bring new works and new vision to the Grand Rapids theater community. So without further ado, I present Gaston LaRue's The Phantom of the Opera. The play starts on the empty stage of the Paris Opera House, summer 1924, where music can be heard playing off stage. You are doing it again. Mm -hmm. You are writing a new story, aren't you? <laughs> what makes you say that? Every time you have a new story on your mind, you get that same far off look on your face. It's like you're planning a murder. So, what's the story about? Does uh, it have anything to do with who you're meeting today? Well, I'm not sure yet. Are you nervous? Uh, within reason. It will be fine, dear. I presume he simply wants to discuss the book. Yes. Mother, father. Uh, what is it, Madeline? He, he. Darling, you must breathe. He's here. I saw him out in the carriage out front. The manager said you could use his office for the meeting. Shall we go? Well, actually, I was thinking of having the uh, meeting right here. On stage? Uh, it seems the perfect place. I suppose so. I will go fetch him then. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Uh, this is so exciting. <laughs> yes, let's, let's hope your mother does not scare him away. Oh, I do not think that is possible. <laughs> Why is that? Because he himself is so scary. Are you scared of him? Not him exactly, but the monsters he creates. I mean, Mother and I saw him at the cinema a few months ago and he was frightfully dreadful. <laughs> well, I hope for my sake that he's not as frightfully dreadful in person. <laughs> oh no, he looks nothing like the hunchback he played. He is very handsome and kind and gentle. Madeline, and... you have not even met him yet. I know, but I, he uh, is- A bit starstruck, are we? <laughs> oh, father, I've never met a world famous movie star before. The music abruptly stops. Uh, what happened to the music? I turned it off. <laughs> Why would you do that? Because we have a guest. It was lovely. Faust, wasn't it? Uh, yes. I refuse to travel anywhere without my phonograph. <laughs> you should hear how he plays it at home. Blasts it in every room. <laughs> <laughs> Opera should only be listened to when listened loudly. Of course. You know, I assume my wife already introduced herself. Uh, this is my daughter, uh, Madeleine. It's nice to meet you, Monsieur Cheney. <laughs> Please, honey, call me Lon. Monsieur Lon. <laughs> no, I mean, just Lon is fine. I am sorry. <laughs> Would you uh, want me to take your um, box, Monsieur Lon? No, thank you, Madeline. I apologize. Uh, when Madeline found out that I was meeting Lon Chaney, the famous movie star, she, she insisted on coming. Father! <sighs> You are to blame, dear. You are the one who got her interested in acting. How uh, so? Oh, I had formed a small movie company a few years back, uh, just serialized films. In which Madeline had a few starring roles and... In... She got the acting book. I must know, after the lashing scene in The Hunchback, when Esmeralda brought you water, 
the fright and surprise on your face seems so real. How did you do it? The key is making your audience feel the emotion, not yourself. Esmeralda didn't bring me the water. She brought it to the deformed, misunderstood creature within all of us. So it is the audience that makes it real. Finding the character is what makes it real. Well, the manager promised Madeline and me a tour of the Opera House, and then we have some shopping to do downtown. So we will leave you two in peace. <laughs> Good luck finding your character, Madeline. You too. I mean, not that you need. Um, Come along, dear. I, uh, I know you must be wondering why. Uh, I know why you're here. Well, you do. Uh, the man of a thousand faces has come to put a face on the phantom. Trying to, at least. That's actually one of the reasons I wanted to see you. I was hoping to show you what I've come up with so far. Hmm. Man? John opens up the box and begins applying makeup to his face. So this is the magical makeup box of Lon Chaney. I suppose, but there's no magic in it that I've found. Just a lot of putty and spirit gum and collodion. Uh, do you think you'll be able to find the phantom uh, in this box? I hope so. Well, that sounds like magic to me. <laughs> the makeup only helps to reveal the heart of the character, the, uh, the soul. That's where the true magic lies. That's why I need your help. We're slated to start filming in a few months, but we're running into the same problems with the script. How, how so? Well, the studio has got it in their heads that the ending needs more action. They want this elaborate chase scene where the phantom gets killed by an angry mob. Well, that seems like, like perfect fodder for film. But it completely contradicts your novel. I wanted this role because the phantom is more than just a monster. Are you sure about that? Are you? <clears throat> what is it you want from me? Not many people know this, but I was the one that sent Carl Lemley here to purchase the rights to your book. I fell in love with it the moment I read it. Well, I'm afraid I will not be of much use to you then. Uh, all you need is the book. The more I've read it, the less of the character I understand. I feel something is missing. Something you did not include in the book. Uh, and that would be? The truth. What truth? Did the Phantom of the Opera actually exist? The truth does not belong on film, and it certainly does not sell books. I have to know. Hmm. Yeah, perhaps it is time. Tell me, the whole story. The whole story. It's been nearly 45 years since the whole story began. Much has changed since then, yet the Paris Opera House is not. There is, is magic in this place, magic that does not fade. Magic that, if you look closely, may even bring the stage to life. It was January 22nd, 1880. They were preparing to celebrate the retirement of the current managers, Gerard Dabian and Francois Pouligny, by hosting a, a gala performance. The night would be set into motion, the story of love and of horror that still haunts the Opera House to this day. The stage comes to life, shedding the years as lights cross fade into the next scene. We are now backstage at the Opera House, winter, 1880. Welcome, messieurs and mesdames. No, that's not right. Hello, honored guests. Oh, that's even worse. Greetings, opera patrons. No, 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 no. Talking to yourself again, Sorelli? Meg, thank goodness you're here. I need your help desperately. Yes, I would say so. I am trying to write this speech for tonight's reception dinner. Are you sure you'll have enough time to give a speech? What do you mean? You seem to disappear with the Count after 
every performance. I do not. He's come to the opera almost every day for the past few months. Philippe is a great patron of the arts. Then why are you blushing? I am not. Besides, Philippe only comes to the opera because of his brother. His brother? Oh, yes. The sailor boy. Roll is a highly decorated Navy officer, just returned from a voyage around the world, and he is the one insistent on coming to the opera, not to believe. Probably ogling the dancers. Not exactly. It's, well... What? Philippe says it's because of Christine. Christine? Yes. Oh, Christine! What is going on? Sorelli was telling me a little secret about you and a certain Vicomte de Chagny. What do you mean? Calm now, Christine. Sorelli says that your little sailor boy has been coming to the opera to see you. What? <laughs> he has? I mean, he told you this, Sorelli? He has asked after you many times. Really? What did you say? Oh, this and that. Like what? She said that you want him madly and cannot wait until you're in his big, strong arms. You didn't. <laughs> did I? <laughs> Looks like it's Christine's turn to blush. <laughs> Raul was very excited when they made you Carlotta's understudy. Is it true that you've been taking lessons? Well, yes. From whom? Don't ask. I've already tried many times. It's a mystery. Oh, a mystery. What does it matter anyway? Carlotta will never allow me to sing. To sing. But she's never had an understudy before. That must mean something. She's been the prima donna for five years now. It's about time someone else takes her place. And with a rich V count backing you now, I'm sure it will only be a matter of time. But you must hurry. Raoul has been assigned to some American naval expedition. He leaves only in a few months. Maybe that's for the best. What? Nothing. Why were you two lurking out here anyway? I'm working on a speech for tonight. A speech? For Monsieur Stevenay and Bellini's retirement. They have always been so good to me, but I simply cannot get it right. Well, let's hear what you have. All right, all right. <clears throat> Welcome, messieurs and mesdames, to the reception dinner. I hope you all enjoyed the gala performance. Messieurs Devigny and Poligny, you will be missed greatly. That's it. Yes, is it too long? Uh, no, no, it's perfect. <laughs> it was lovely. I hope everything goes smoothly tonight. I am sure it will. <laughs> Joseph, you scoundrel! What were you thinking scaring us like that? Scare you? <laughs> you should be scared. What was the theopera ghost about? Joseph, do not speak of him. Not on the night of a performance. Opera ghost, opera ghost, opera <laughs> ghost! I am not listening. No, no, no. He's what? coming for you. What? Where? Stop it, Meg. It is only a silly superstition. Every time someone misses a step or sings a sour note, they blame it on the opera ghost. And old scene shifters who have had too much to drink only make it worse. I am sober and steady as a rock. The phantom of the opera does not exist. Oh, he exists, all right. I've seen him stare right into the face of the demon. I was down by the footlights when I saw a dark creature lurking in the shadows. I, I chased him down to the cellar and was this close to catching him when he disappeared, vanished into the darkness. What did he look like? Oh, he has dark glowing eyes like burning embers. His skin is pulled across jagged bones and his, his flesh is a sickly color like that of death. He has the nose of a skeleton eaten away by decay. He's a ghastly, decrepit, living corpse. This tale gets taller every time you tell it. <laughs> but it's true. 
He is a loathsome demon, and the devil himself threw out of hell for his accursed ugliness. He has a razor-sharp teeth and inhumane claws, and that are drenched in the blood of his victims. <laughs> oh, naughty, naughty, Joseph. My mother's <laughs> warned you not to speak of the ghost in such a way. <laughs> or else I will suffer the consequences. Uh, now nah, your mother's never seen the ghost's face like I have. And once you have, it haunts you forever. <sighs> Come now. I've heard this ghost story too many times. Shame on you, Joseph. I'm nervous <laughs> enough about tonight as it is. <laughs> the Phantom haunts us all. Joseph. Who said that? Who's there? Hmm. Hmm. We are now in the manager's office. It's not that I'm having second thoughts, Fearman. It's, but I've just never managed an opera house before. Well, neither have I, but I know music and you know everything else. But I can't understand a word of it. That's the beauty of it. The audience will come regardless. But fear, man, I... Stop being so negative. I do not mean to be negative. I, I was only nervous. Oh, you are always nervous. Where is Polonia? He said it, this was an urgent matter. Relax. I'm sure he'll be here soon. I only wonder what it was that he... Hmm. Sorry, I'm late, monsieur. There's much to do when preparing to retire. <laughs> I am sure. I hope you have had a chance to explore your new opera house. Yes, it is quite beautiful. Well, it's yours now. Yes, it is. And all the paperwork is in order. Everything is notarized and final. So I fail to see what is so important that you insisted upon this meeting in the final hour. Yes, well, well that is something I, I feel I need you must know. Uh, Monsieur Debienne, uh, Gerard, does not want you to know that if he knew I was here, he would make quite a scene. But I feel as though it is my duty to tell all as my burden to tell you about the opera ghost. Ghost? Yes, I, I'm afraid so. <laughs> you see, this, this building has a very tumultuous history. War broke out not long after construction began, leaving the opera house half-finished and, and, and desolate. What does this have to do with managing the opera? What many do not know is that the opera house was used to interrogate and torture prisoners of war. That's terrible. Well, that's not the worst part. Spurred by hatred and revenge, one of the prisoners rose from the grave and haunts the opera to this day. <laughs> oh, 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 sir, you truly are too much. I was worried for nothing. I had heard you were always close with your cast, but never that you thought yourself the comedian. A wonderful jest. Well, I assure you it's no jest. And the ghost shall appear before us at any moment. You very well might. Now, what was it you wanted to see us about? This is the instruction book for the Pelé Garnier. Yes, Armand and I have a copy just like it. You will want to read this copy very carefully. In it, you will find the demands of the opera ghost. I always enjoy a good laugh, but this is ridiculous. If you are trying to make fools of us... Believe me, it is the furthest thing from my mind. But the ghost who... Enough of this ghost business. Well, dear Lord, this opera ghost demands 20,000 francs a month? What? and the executive use of box five for all performances. It's written here at the bottom, you see in red. Yes, 20,000 francs a month. Believe me, a price worth paying. <laughs> I, I dare not set foot in box five ever again. I did once and vowed never to return. Also, it seems that the ghost has taken a liking to one of the chorus girls, demands to, I make a car la Carlotta's understudy. But uh, yes, Christine Daae, correct? Yes, yes, a, a very charming girl, and the casting is not beyond merit, though La Carlotta would not let me hear the end of it. This is lunacy. I refuse to follow the commands of some specter. Gerard and I had the same sense of stubborn rebellion when the ghost found me appeared to us, but trust me, you do not obey him. Disobey him. 
We are trying to run an opera here. An opera whose quality has suffered due to your negligence, and you have the gall to bring us here. Tell us some half-crazed ghost story and extort 20,000 francs from us every month? I only wish to warn you. Get out. Get out of here right now. Oh, please, please. You, you must listen Get now. Get out. Oh, Fearman, Fearman, let him be. Oh, I, I shall leave. But mark my, my words, he will come for you. And when he does, I pity your souls. Can you believe that man? No wonder he is retiring. He has completely lost his mind. Well, losing your temper did not help. Opera ghost, what nonsense. We are now in Christine's dressing room. Come on, Christine. James is certain he saw the Phantom in the back passageway. I refuse to chase any ghosts with you tonight. She said he came straight through the wall. Meg, I need to get ready for tonight. You're no fun. Neither are ghosts. Well, then I shall go catch him myself. Christine. Angel. Tonight you will be revealed to the world. What do you mean? You think it is mere coincidence that tonight is the anniversary of your father's death? No. Tonight you shall sing to heaven. But Carlotta is singing tonight. We shall see about that. What? All will be revealed in time. I was wondering, Meg is such a good friend to me. Would it be okay if I told her about you? You are to tell no one. Yes, of course. Your father sent me to you and you alone. The angel of music is not to be paraded and displayed. I'm sorry. It is. Okay, my child, you need only quiet your mind and focus. You have a big night to prepare for. Prepare for what? Angel? Who were you talking to? Carlotta. <laughs> I heard voices. There is no one else in here. See for yourself. <laughs> not patronize me, well. What can I do for you? I do not know how you sweet talk yourself into being a my understudy, but mark my words, it will not last for long. You may have fooled Darien and Pauline with your supposed innocence, but the new managers will not be deceived so easily. What do you mean? Marie? I found this in my Car Carlotta's dressing room. What is it? You know what it is. Madame Carlotta, you will find it quite advantageous to refrain from attending the gala performance tonight. If you do, you will find yourself very ill indeed. Regards, Opera Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> what is too funny, Marie? Nothing. I'm sorry. Well, you will be sorry. Please, do not take it out on Marie. Someone has obviously played a childish trick on you, madame. A childish trick played by a child. If you think ghosts scare me, you are gravely mistaken. You think I wrote this? Do not play innocent with me, little girl. I have never seen this letter before in my life. Do you take me for a fool? I know how the opera works. I have done many things that I am not proud of to get where I am today. And I am not about to throw away all of those sacrifices for an ingenue with an overactive imagination. Want some advice? <gasps> Madam, you didn't need to. Get away from her, Marie. Oh, does it hurt? <laughs> if if better, if not, I will make sure the next one does, and you can tell your ghost the same. I'm sorry, Christine. She is 
Mari. Yes. Yes. We are now in Carlotta's dressing room. Can you believe her? She thinks herself a rival. Her voice would not carry past the conductor's nose. She's been taking lessons. Is that so? Yes, and they say her voice has improved quite a lot. <laughs> who is saying this? I, I... Find out who is spreading this vicious lie and have them thrown out. Everyone is saying it, madam. Everyone? No matter, that conniving wench will never set foot on that stage again. You didn't have to slap her like that. She had it coming. The letter was probably meant as a jest. So you think it was funny? No, I... But it was, wasn't it? I hope it was worth it because you, will now, you have now successfully lost today's pay. Please, no. Get out. Get out of my dressing room at once. I need that money. Would you rather lose your pay for the week? You cannot do this. Why not? I think it is rather funny, don't you? Now get out before I fire you. Yes. Yes, of course. Everyone is going crazy except me. But they will see soon enough, precious little Christine Daye will be the only ghost around here. Oprah ghost. Ah. <laughs> Madam. What? Madam, I must implore you. Who is that? Where are you? You will not sing tonight. Is that you, Christine? I swear I you shall- have said many hurtful things about Christine Daae and I shall put an end to it. How dare you? Listen to me. I will do no such Listen thing. Listen to me closely. Listen to my voice. Only my voice. Only your voice. You will not sing tonight. I, I will not sing tonight. You are feeling very ill. You will go home immediately. But, but the gala... You will go home now. I will go home now. And send your regrets to the management? Uh, yes, of course. La Carlotta? Yes? You will remember none of this. Who... who are... Who am who... I? Why, I'm the opera ghost, of course. <laughs> 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 we are now on the grand staircase. It is the night of the gala performance. Come, it will be starting soon. It's only a gala? Why are you to rush? Are this about the chorus girl again? Christine is not just a chorus girl. She is La Carlotta's understudy. Oh, dear brother, why do you torture yourself? What do you mean? For months, you've been coming here and stalking this poor girl, and she is not even better than eyelash to you. That makes no difference. Raoul, I understand. And you will be leaving soon. You deserve to go out and have some fun. I doubt there will be many women in the Arctic, but that does not mean you should obsess over just one. Spare me the advice, Philippe. You have been coming to the opera just as much as me to see La Sorelli. I may not be going on an expedition into the frozen wastelands, but I deserve some fun as well. So stop lecturing me. But this is all that it will ever be, fun. You have always had an attachment to the fairer sex. My mother gave her life in giving life to you. 
leave mother out of this. I do not think it wise to fixate on a girl who does not even know who you are. But she does. She does? Do you remember the summer I spent in Peros? Oh, after father died, I sent you there to, to stay with Aunt Beatrice. Yes, she would always take me on walks along the beach. One day we heard music in the distance. It was the most beautiful music I had ever heard. So graceful, so tender, as if from heaven. What does this have to do with your quarters, girl? We followed the music and found an old man playing a violin. He had a little daughter. She stood next to him singing. She had the voice of an angel. That little girl was Christine Dye. I see. I was mesmerized by her voice, hypnotized, until a sudden gust of wind picked up the scarf she was wearing and carried it out to sea. Without thinking, I dove in and fetched it. After that, we were inseparable. I spent the entire summer with her and her father, listening to his stories, hearing her sing, and when I returned home, I... I, I oh, you locked yourself in your room for weeks. I thought it was because of father, uh, but... I, he, you, know, when you first brought me to the opera, and I saw her there on stage. I fell madly in love with her all over again. But you are a child. Only, what, what 12 years old? Things change. Not this. Not her. Oh, love will be the death of you yet, boy. Come on. After the performance, we'll go see if I can get an audience with Mademoiselle Daae. Thank you, Philippe. We are now in the hallway outside of the grand staircase. Messieurs, messieurs. Uh, yes, madame. I am Madame Thierry. I am the usher for the first tier boxer and mother to little Meg. That is what they call her. Um, she is a little dancer, you know. Um, she danced beautifully last. Yes, yes. Now, what is it that you want? Oh, I have come to tell you that Monsieur Meunier and his partners have left. Meunier, he's... Uh... He's gym dealer from the Rue Mogador. Always gives healthy chips. Let me tell you, when me and my fellow ushers see Monsieur Mignon entering the opera, we become quite giddy. <laughs> but, but, but I knew there was trouble when I saw where he sat for tonight's performance. Will you please get to the point? The performance is about to begin. Not if the opera ghost has anything to say about it. Oh, dear Lord. Well, you've heard of him. Heard of him, Monsieur? I have been his usher for the past five years. His what? It was during a performance of La Juive when I first met the opera ghost. You've seen him? Oh, of course not, Monsieur. He's a ghost, a shade, a wandering spirit. One cannot see things that are on a different ethereal plane. Ethereal plane? The spirit world, monsieur. Oh, yes, of course. He's only a voice. A man's voice. A ghostly gentleman. How nice. He usually arrives in the middle of the first act and knocks three times on the door. Let me tell you, the first time that I heard it, knowing full well that the box was empty, oh, Put me in quite a stupor. More than usual. Oh. Well, I went inside the box, but it was empty. So I turned to leave, and that's when I heard it. Well, heard what? The voice. Oh. He spoke as though he was standing right next to me. And yet, the box was empty. And what did he say? He, he asked me for a footstool. A footstool. He must be a wandering spirit if he needs to rest his feet during the show. What did you do? Well, I brought him the footstool. Oh, she is a raving lunatic. At the end of the performance, he gave me two, five, or even ten francs. But I will, I will probably not be finding a tip from the upper ghost tonight. 
And why is that? So fool, let Monsieur and Madame Mignard and their friend Isidore Sack sit in box five. The box was available, so I sold it to them. Oh, but Monsieur, that is a ghost box. Monsieur Mania had just taken his seat when the ghost bade him to look to his wife. And what did he see? Why, his friend Isidore Sack whispering sweet nothings into Madame Mania's ear and kissing her hand. Obviously, not as discreet as they thought. Well, you can imagine what happened next. Bang, bang, slap, slap, and the ghost left me all the while. The indiscretions of our patrons are not our concern. Was you told of the arrangement for Box 5, were you not? Music is heard off stage. I have heard enough of this. And look, the gala has begun. This ghost has caused enough problems, and now he has made us late. <sighs> he will do much more than that if you do not heed his demands. Well, surely it's a joke. The, this whole opera ghost business, it must be a joke. I did not see Isidore Sack laughing. I... I better take my seat. As long as it's not in box five. Uh, yes, uh, of course. Despite the looming presence of the opera ghost, the gala performance went splendidly, as the audience was never more captivated as when Christine Daae took the stage. Her voice enchanted, entranced, completely and utterly enraptured them. And the magic spell she cast seemed to bewitch even her, for as the audience applause filled the silence at the end of her aria, she fainted and collapsed on stage. She was overwhelmed by the audience response, but more importantly, she was overtaken by the voice she had found that night, the voice of an angel. The lights cross-fade into Christine's dressing room. Thank you, Viscount. I don't know what we would have done without you. The way you jumped on stage. <laughs> Quite exciting. <laughs> We're all, I've always been fond of leaping before looking. Angel. Angel. Christine, can you hear me? Have you ever seen anything like that? A singer fainting on stage? Oh, never in my life. She must be quite frail. I've never heard her sing like that. Where did she get that voice? Six months ago, she sang like a rusty hinge. It's a leap. Well, it's true. It is not. Her voice was merely missing something. Well, whatever it was, she evidently found it. Angel. What? Angel of music. Christine, are you all right? It's going to be all right, Christine. I am here. What are you doing in here? You fainted and I... No, you must leave at once. Don't you remember me? The boy who fetched your scarf. You did what now? Christine, you know the V-Count? What? No. I've never seen him before in my life. When we were little. And your father... Monsieur, I know nothing of this. Christine, I love you. What? Look into my eyes, Christine. Tell me you do not know me. You are a complete stranger. But the way you sang tonight... I am quite flattered, Monsieur. But I tell you, I do not know who you are. Are you calling my brother a liar? Are you calling Christine a liar? Well, she's obviously confused. The V-Count here is the one confused. The V-Count graduated first in his class at the French Naval Academy and has been assigned to... Stay out of this, Philippe. I will not stand here while our name is sullied for the sake of this girl. Come along, Sorelli. But, Christine, she... <laughs> Very well. Suit yourself. Something is going on here, Christine, and I will find it out one way or another. Are, 
Are you all right, Christine? I am fine. Don't worry about the V-Count. You know these sailors. He must have mistaken you for one of his other port trollops. Will you both please leave? I was only joking. I want to be alone. Are you sure? Yes. Well, all right. Great job tonight, Christine. Come on, Sorelli. Christine, the angels wept tonight. I sang for you. Yes, I know. And heaven heard you. It frightened me, as though it were not my voice. Do not be afraid. You sang to me tonight, and I sang through you. You still have much to learn. Your voice is ready, but your heart wanders. You must love only the music. You must love only me. The Viscount seemed quite agitated tonight. Yes, I don't know. Do not lie to me, Christine. The Viscount has been fawning over you for months. I thought it was only a ridiculous infatuation, but that is not true, is it? No, I... But I warn you, if you give your heart to someone here on Earth, then I will have to go back to heaven. There's not enough room in your heart for the love of music and the love of that foppish child. He means nothing to me. It is, as you said, a ridiculous infatuation. Believe me, please, believe me. I love only the music. I love only you. I believe you. But you must be careful, Christine. Your beauty and talent has a way of bewitching the faint of heart. You give your soul when you sing. Some disreputable men may see that as an invitation. So you must never see him again. Do you understand? Yes. I am so sorry that I must be strict with you, Christine. I understand. To make amends and, and to reward you for your faith, I shall send you a gift. You have given me so much already. Your father sent me to you. And now to you, I shall send your father. My father? But how? Visit his grave, and if your faith is strong, there he shall play to you from heaven. You would do that for me? For you? Christine? Anything? No. Go. Thank you, Angel. You are very welcome, my love. We are now on the grand staircase. Monsieur Richard, your reputation precedes you. My reputation? Nothing bad, I hope. Of course not. Oh, your reputation precedes you as well. It does. For being the most beautiful creature in all the world. Is that all? What of my dancing? Your every movement sends a, a quiver of ineffable languor through your entire body. Oh, monsieur. Oh, so this is where you disappeared to. Philippe, I... Oh, save it. The chorus girls are all the same. I beg your pardon? Have you seen my brother? Not since Christine's dressing room. Oh, he must have left already. It is time I do the same. Have fun, monsieur, while you can. Hmm. What 
was that about? Have you heard? What? The opera ghost is struck again. I warned him. How many times did I warn him? Let me tell you. What? Did the opera ghost not get his footstool tonight? You should not joke of such things. That was Joseph Bouquet's mistake. The shadow of a mysterious figure begins to descend onto the stage. What happened to Joseph? The ghost. He... Oh, the ghost! Pardon the intrusion, but I must speak to you. Who are you? Who I am is irrelevant. What I have to tell you is a matter of grave importance. Wait, you look familiar. It's the Persian. Persian? That is what they have come to call me. Not entirely accurate, but... You're the one that is always prowling around backstage. Prowling? I assure you, I am merely a curious foreigner who is fascinated by the magical art of the theater. I think you're hoping to catch a glimpse of the dancers in their dressing rooms. <laughs> My interest in this opera house is not what I have come to talk about. It is... Fearman, Fearman, it's a catastrophe! I am glad you are here. This concerns you as well. And who are you? Joseph Bouquet is dead. What? Joseph? The opera ghost murdered him! How do you already know about it? The stage manager only just told me, and it wasn't murder, the poor devil committed suicide. So sure are you? He hung himself smelling foul of alcohol. Are you saying something else killed him? Or someone else? The ghost. Murder meant to look like suicide. I told Joseph he shouldn't have spoken about the ghost the way that he did. Then perhaps he did commit suicide after all by tempting the anger of the Phantom of the Opera. I do not care what he did. He is dead all the same. Come, Armand, we must tend to this now before a scandal takes hold. There will be more scandal to come if you do not tend to the opera ghost. The only ghost I care about is the, jo the ghost of Joseph Bouquet. Let us hope he does not haunt the front page of tomorrow's post. Come on, Sorelli. They say they found the body in the third cellar. I'd rather not. Crazy exciting night. Christine fainting, the fight in box five, and... By the way, did you hear that poor Isidore's act broke his leg running from Monsieur Magnat? Tripped right down these stairs, and let me tell you... Mother? But it is true. And let, me, and let me tell you. You don't think it was really the ghost that killed Joseph, do you? Yes. Yes, I do. Does the ghost frighten you? Yes. Very Good. much so. We are at the Paros Galek Cemetery. I miss you, Father. Now more than ever. Father, I know that you sent me the Angel of Music to find my voice again. Did you send Raoul as well? Perhaps he did. What are you doing here? I followed you. Why would you? You remember Why? me, don't you? How could I forget the little boy who saved my scar? I came back the next summer, but you were gone. After you left, father became very ill. He died that winter. I am sorry, I did not know. I moved to Paris and began instruction at the Conservatoire. Friends of my father took me in, but they died a few years ago. I am all alone now, Raoul. No, you are not. He will not allow it. Who? 
the man in your dressing room. What? You could have told me that you love someone else. How did... What? After Meg and Sorelli left, I listened outside of your dressing room. You heard him? How is that possible? He's using you, Christine. You do not understand. His ill intent is quite clear. Who I give my heart to is my choice and mine alone. The only ill intent I see tonight is of guileful V-count eavesdropping on private conversations and stalking about in graveyards. Who is this man, Christine? Do you remember the story Father used to tell us? The story of the Angel of Music? Yes, yes, it was our favorite. A spirit from heaven that comes to set fire to the divine music. Within every great musician. That voice you heard was not the voice of a man. It was the, it was the angel of music. Father sent him from heaven. I thought I was the only one who could hear him. Christine, it was only a story. I know that. I have never been a superstitious person. That part of me died with my father. But the things the angel knows and the things he has taught me, where else can he come from but from heaven? Tremulous and powerful violin music begins to play, coming from everywhere and nowhere. My God, I recognize that music. <laughs> you see, Raoul, it is my father. It, it can't be. Father. Christine. The music begins to fade. Wait, father, don't go. I, I do not believe it. It was him, Raoul. He came back for me. There has got to be an explanation. There is. It was my father. We are now in the manager's office. What are you so worked up about, Armand? A man was found murdered in our opera house. Oh, the police ruled it a suicide. But that man, the Persian, uh, he said he, it. <laughs> he is a foreigner, prone to a, a wild imagination. I think we should look into this ghost business. Oh, and how do you propose we do that? A, a seance? <laughs> this is no laughing matter. Of course it is. A man decided to hang himself at the opera. That happens at the opera all the time. Tonight, we are putting on Faust, an opera about an old man who is saved from his deathbed by selling his soul to the devil for the sake of a girl. That is opera. That is the world. And audiences love death. <laughs> I want her out on the street. What are you talking about? Christine Dye. La Carlotta, we were very sorry to hear that you were not feeling well enough to perform at last night's gala. I do not know how she did it. One moment I was in my dressing room, and the next it was morning and I had missed the gala. But you sent us a note. I sent no such thing. But madam, I've told you, you, you are not beyond suspicion, Mary. So be quiet and give me that note. Uh, Madame Carlotta, if you sing tonight, you must expect grave, great misfortune to strike you just when you begin to sing. A misfortune worse than death regards opera ghost. If you do not throw Christine Daae out, then I shall be the one to leave. I know a lot of people in this city, messieurs, very powerful people. When I am done with you, you will not find a job running a horse stable. Carlotta, the girl is young, naive, and completely out of her element. The whole city is talking about her. You are not helping. Karen, 
Christine does not possess your strength and presence. We are but slaves to your every word. You are only trying to flatter me. Oh, Christine could not handle a role like this. Why, just last night, she fainted on stage. Did she fall on her head? Right on her head. I hope it leaves a mark on her pretty little face. So, will you sing Marguerite in Faust tonight? And Christine, you will fire her? Oh, I'm not so sure. What do you mean? Well, if we fire your understudy, there is bound to be a scandal. Then what do you propose that we do? Sing Marguerite tonight. Make them forget the very name of Christine Daae. Yes. Yes, I like that. I knew you would. And I wouldn't want to waste my strength and, uh, what did you call it? Oh, presence. Yes, my presence. We can discuss it in more detail tonight, before the show. Uh, will you become slave to my every word? I look forward to it. I shall see you then, monsieur. Madame? You disgust me sometimes, you know that? Armand, stop your jealousy. It is not becoming. I am not jealous. I'm worried. This is not the only note I've received today. Dear Lord, another? My dear managers, last night's gala performance was a rousing success. I look forward to tonight's performance of Faust, but there are a few conditions that, must, uh, that you must follow. Number one, box five will be placed at my disposal immediately. Number two, the role of Marjorie will be sung by Christine Daae. And the number three, seal my 20,000 francs an envelope from which I will collect my monthly allowance. Regards, Opera Ghost. The ghost, the ghost. Everything is about the ghost. What are we to do? Well, I will tell you what. Tonight, we shall watch the performance from box five, and if he comes knocking, I shall throw him out myself. And so, Faust was performed that night. Carlotta played the part of Marguerite. Christine Dyer returned to the chorus. The managers took their seats in Bach Five, and despite the threats, the night went rather splendid there. Carlotta sang as never before, with, with a power born from spite and malevolence. Yes, Faust was going rather well. But of course, the ghost always arrived late to the opera. The lights cross fade. We are now backstage. Marie, Marie. Powder, Marie, where is my powder? I am carrying this entire show by myself. Everyone out there is filling the stage with their hot air and my makeup is sweating. You said to lock your makeup in the dressing room. And where is my water? Do you want my vocal cords to dry up on stage? You cannot expect me to read your thoughts. I expect you to do what I tell you. Mephistopheles can only squawk out there for so long. Now go. Madam, I... Would you rather I throw you to the gutters? Go ahead. Fire me. You threaten it every day, but every day here I am. You need me. You don't want to admit it, but it's true. Without me, you'd only have the sound of your own voice to keep you company. And the worst part is I pity you. I see you for what you are. An insecure diva whose life is as empty as her threats. Look what you've done. I'm about to miss my entrance. Oh, poor Marie. She does not deserve you, Marie. Who is that? Where are you? Listen to me closely, Marie. I, I... Listen to my voice. Only my voice. Only your voice. La Carlotta is quite parched. She needs her water. Her water? Come here, Marie. I shall give it to you. Yes. Very good, Marie. 
Very good. We are now in box five. You see, you were worried for nothing. We are already into Act 4 with no sign of a ghost. Should still be on our guard. The only thing we should do is sit back and enjoy the show. Perhaps Madame Jiri could bring us a footstool. All we need to do is knock three times. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yes, I heard it. What do we do? Someone is at the door. Well, who was it? No one. What? It, it must have been a restless child. Something is going on here. I don't care if it's a ghost, a, a child, or a conniving soprano. It must be dealt with. There's nothing going on, and... Messieurs, I hope you are enjoying tonight's performance. It is unfortunate that it plays in a cursed house. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? It was the ghost. Yes, yes, I know. But it was the ghost. Beerman, come on. We need to get backstage. What is happening? He must be stopped. We are now backstage. Mary, Mary, please, that useless girl. I wasted my entire act. Break. Please, you must listen to me. Raul, you cannot be back here. He is not the angel of music. Hello, Christine. Have you been enjoying the show from the chorus? Carlotta? The audience loves me. Me! They've all but forgotten about you. Christine could sing circles around you. Raoul, please don't. And who are you? I am Vicomte Raoul de Chigny. Well, Monsieur Vicomte, little Miss Christine does not sing. She croaks like a toad. She could not think to save her life. You miserable little... Come on, Raoul. She is not worth it. That's right. Run away. Run away to Daddy. Oh, wait. You can't. Ah, Marie, there you are, and just in time. To your career and to your father, both dead and forgotten. Christine, wait. Leave me alone. Madam, wait. What? The water. Don't drink the water. What? What are you talking about? What else would I do with it? Now go, before I need to, I still need my powder. You are a monster. Aren't we all? <coughs> Help, somebody. We are too late. Oh my God. But he warned us. The ghost. The ghost? The angel! Oh God, Christine! We are now in Christine's dressing room. That wicked woman! My father sent me the angel! He... Miss begins is... rising onto the stage. The world is a cruel, evil place. I have come to take you away. Angel? I told you to love only the music. Christine, I am the music. The phantom appears inside the mist, cloaked in black and wearing a mask that covers his entire face. Christine! Raoul? Listen to me. 
He is not an angel. Listen to my voice. Only my voice. Only yeah. Christine, your... please. The world has taken so much from you. Your father, your music, I can give them all back. Believe in me and I will give you everything. You will sing for me. You are my angel of music. Christine, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> Christine! We are back on the stage of the Paris Opera House, summer 1924. Lon has his back to the audience while Madeline applies makeup and powder to his face. So what about the chandelier? No, I didn't forget it. It just never really happened. <laughs> uh, but it's featured so prominently in the book. Well, it is based on something that happened years later, uh, completely unrelated to the Phantom. I brought all of my research here, uh, if you are curious. So, uh, are you two still at it? No peeking. It does not have to be perfect. But it is, Father, it is. And then why am I the only one held in suspense? Mon asked for my help. You were not invited. Well, I doubt he needs help. Father, tell him about Carlotta. Oh, in due time. Oh, yes. The book never mentions what happened to her. She did not die, but she can never sing again. It caused quite the scandal, right, Father? Yes, sir. But the police could find no evidence of any known poisons in the water. Uh, in the end, the, the rumor of the opera ghost was all that remained. I think you're ready for the mask. I know. So, how much of the story was based on truth? Well, I knew the story needed to be told. But the truth had to remain hidden, so I embellished a few things here and there. Embellished? Is that what you call it? Well, the truth is always an embellishment. Listen, where's Madeline? Oh, Lon wanted some help with his makeup. Uh, I am sure she was all too eager to help. I apologize. We finished our tour of the Opera House long ago, but Madeline has found every excuse to loiter about. Oh, it is fine. I do not blame her. Yes, but our carriage has begun collecting dust. Madeline, come on. We really must get going. The shops do not stay open all day. Yes, yes. Come along, Mother. All that, and we are not staying for the grand reveal? Lon wants Father to get the full experience. Oh, dear. You will barely recognize him, Father. It's absolutely grotesque. <laughs> Don't be, you not be too free, free frightened, dear. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> no promises. Monsieur LaRue? With his back to the audience, the Phantom reaches up and pulls off the mask. My God. <laughs> <laughs> we are now in the phantom's lair, deep in the catacombs beneath the opera house. Music is heard echoing through the caverns. 
Sorry to have taken so long, my darling. I, I decided to stop and see how tonight's performance was going. Have you been listening to it, my love? Opera is meant to be seen, not just heard. You're not missing much. I don't know what they were thinking. Othello, with the talent they have now. Perhaps I should return. You shall never sing for them again. You will sing only for me. I cannot sing down here. Oh, don't say that. It is too cold and damp. I, I will die. I will die if you do not sing. If you were to let me leave. Oh, remember what happened the last time you tried to escape? You got lost. Lost in my kingdom. You should be glad I found you when I did. You had become quite disheartened. Your head full of dangerous thoughts. You cannot keep me here forever. Can't you see how beautiful it is down here? A house of my own design, an opera above us that plays only for us, a dazzling underground lake full of color and mystique. It is a prison. I bought you something today, another reason for my tardiness. I, uh, I hope it is to your liking. Marry me, Christine. I barely know you. I'm the one who loves you. That's all you need to know. I do not even know your name. My name is of no consequence. Then what should I call you? The Phantom of the Opera. If I am a phantom, it is because that is what they have made me. <laughs> you created the opera ghost just as much as they did. I had no choice. You don't understand. Help me understand. If you'll love me, everything will be different. We could be happy. I will give you everything you want, everything you need. Who are you? I'm no one. What is your name? I have no name. Liar. It is not a lie. You have lied to me from the beginning. You made me believe that my father had sent you from heaven. You took my sorrow and you twisted it until I was no longer myself. You cannot bring my father back. You cannot bring music back. There are no ghosts, no angels, no heaven. There is only this place. There is only hell. I, I was once known by the name Eric. That, that name has been dead for a long time. And the mask? You must never ask me about that. If I am to ever love you, I must know your face. That is why I must wear it. The music playing above changes. <gasps> Listen, it, it's the du duet in Act Three. It's miraculous how clear it sounds down here. Yes, right here. This is where I first heard you sing. Within the darkness, a light. A, a flame, a spark, a voice which cast a spell upon me. I followed it across the lake and up through the catacombs, through the secret passages, and there you were singing absently to the shadows, unaware that the shadows were listening. There was something in your voice, something you had lost, Ed, but I knew I could help you find it. And that is where, and when I fell in love with you, that 
is when I knew you had to be mine. You, you are mine. Christine, you are... Christine sneaks up behind him and in a swift motion tears off his mask. Yeah! What have you done? <laughs> this is what you wanted, isn't it? The living corpse, huh? Feast your eyes. Clot your soul. You see it now, don't you? Or is it a mask? Here, here, touch it. Tear away this mask, too. No, no, it's my face. The face you must love. Love me, Christine. Kiss it. Kiss me. But now you've seen my face. Now that is all you will ever see. Anyone who sees my face belongs to me. You must leave now and are afforded all the freedoms you deserve, but you must take this and wear it always. And if your doting Viscount tries to remove it, I will kill him. If he tries to take your things, or take you, I will kill him. And if you, if you don't return to me when I call you, I will kill you both. <sighs> Pack your things. I shall prepare the boat. It was at this time of the year that the carnival was held. A wild and, and rumpus celebration. The Paris Opera House was not spared the festivities, uh, albeit more bohemian than the rest of the city's revelries. One of the many rambunctious traditions was a masquerade ball held at the Palais Garnier, full of madness, mystery, and just a touch of menace. The lights cross fade into the grand staircase. Masked revelers fill the stage. Wild merriments and music echoes jollily. After a moment of dance and laughter, the throng of partygoers migrates off stage in search of more mischief. She's not here, Raoul. How do you know? Because there are some things that even a mask cannot hide. No, she is here. <laughs> you know why they enjoy masquerades? It's to hide their social status. Give them a taste of something they can never have. Maybe it's meant to show them something they could have. Oh, give me that stupid mask. I want to see your face when I talk to you. No. Christine's note is quite clear. Be well masked. For the sake of my life, do not let anyone recognize you. There's no one else here, Raoul. How can you be sure? Philippe rips the mask off of Raoul's face. Not until you speak to me with a civil tongue. This is important, Philippe. No one has heard from Christine in two weeks. Not since... Oh, since, since what? Since she, she disappeared with a mysterious voice from her dressing room? I know what I heard. Well, after what she did to La Carlotta, I'm not surprised. She had nothing to do with that. Well, the fact of the matter is you, you leave for your Arctic expedition in three weeks, and I'm not going to... I may not even go. Wh what? There are more important things than... Than what? Than... Your career? Your name? Just because you receive a letter from your chorus girl does not mean that you... I love her, Philippe. That makes no difference. You cannot marry her. You may wear a mask like them, but you are not one of them. I would rather be one of them than one of you. I'll enjoy your mask while you can. But remember, you cannot change who you are so easily. The partiers once again trounce around the stage, heavy with food and drink. But the festivities are broken by a shrill scream. Amongst the masked guests 
stands the phantom, dressed all in red, with a long cloak stretching behind him, donning a mask whose likeness is that of a grinning skeleton. A thoughtless and careless partier approaches the phantom and reaches out to touch his long cloak. With ghostly quickness, the phantom snatches the would-be fondler's hand. You fool, I am the Red Death. I bring darkness and decay to those I touch, and I have come for you all. The phantom releases the hapless partygoer and stalks through the crowd. The partygoer laughs weakly, attempting to shake off the deathly coldness. Everyone joins in the weak laughter until it builds momentum and the party strikes up again. The masked horde exits in pursuit of more cheerful ventures. Well. Christine? Quickly follow me. Where? The roof. It is the only place we'll be safe. Do not go this way. What? That way. Go quickly. Get out of my way. Eric. Eric is dead. So too will you be if you mention his name again. We are now on the roof of the Opera House, below the statue of Apollo. Christine, there is no one here. We are safe. No, I'm not so sure. Perhaps nowhere is safe from Eric. Eric is his name. It used to be. Who is this man? A demon, an angel, I know not which. He seems to be both and neither at the same time. Do not let him take me again, Raoul. If he does, I will never return. Then we shall go where he can never find us. No, I could not betray him like that. Betray him? What has he done for you? Lied to you? Abuse you? He loves me. And do you love him? Yes, in a way, I think I do. Then go. Be with him. No, Raul, I love you. You do? I always have. I loved you before I understood what love was. And I love you now more than anything in the world. Oh, Christine. Christine. Did you hear that? It must have been the wind. If he sees us together, all will be lost. I belong to him, Raul. I wear his ring. Then rid yourself of it. No, if I ever take it off, he will kill us both. Let the coward show his face, and I will send him back to hell. No, you must n never look upon his face. Once you have, it will haunt you forever, as it haunts me. My carriage is waiting outside. We can go and... He will find us wherever we go. There is only one way to end this. How? I must sing for him. It is the only way he will understand. Then I will be free. My carriage will be ready outside of the opera. We will go somewhere where we can forget all of this. I will never forget. Never. He can be forgotten as easily as this ring. Give it to me. I will throw it far away. No, we mustn't. He does not own you. Eric, wherever you are, please hear me. Please understand. Christine sets the ring down at the feet of Apollo. <laughs> you must stop this. 
away, Droga. No, I promised to leave you alone as long as you lived in peace. But your soul is still dark and full of murder. You don't care about my soul. You care only for your life. If the authorities in Tehran were to discover that Eric was still alive, you'd be hanged for treason. You have brought terror and death to this opera house. I built this opera house. I do with it as I please. Those who get in my way must suffer. Is that what happened to Joseph Bouquet? Who? And what about Carlotta? Don't have time for this. Do you forget so easily what happened with the Sultana? Do not speak of her. This is different. Christine is different. Is that why she ran off with the Viscount? He, he's, he's nothing. He's nothing. And Christine, what kind of life would you have with her? She does not deserve the shadows as you do. I deserve happiness. I deserve life. I no longer want to live in the shadows. You cannot, Eric. You know that. You will die in the light. I am not afraid to die. I have been forced to accept everything life has offered me, even eternity. But is it worth it? More than heaven, Droga. I will have her. I, I meant to have her. And whatever death wants, it takes. We are now in the manager's office. Why should we listen to you? Because this may be our only chance. How do you even know it will get rid of the ghost? You have to trust me. Why don't we call the police? That will only make it worse. Since we took over this opera house, you have been nothing but trouble. Yes, why should we trust you now? Because I know why you clutch that envelope so tightly. If we had listened to him from the beginning, then none of this would have happened. Paying him will not make it stop. It's our only chance. It took some time, but we have his 20,000 francs. The bank teller sealed the envelope himself. I won't have to stay awake at night watching, waiting, wondering when he will come for us, for me. What do you need from us? Let me sing Marguerite tonight. Opera, opera. I don't, I do not understand. I don't understand it when it started. I don't understand it now. Opera is the only thing he understands. If he hears me sing, then if maybe- If some twisted career move, then- <sighs> Believe me, it is not. After tonight, I'm not sure if I will ever sing again. If anything should go wrong, you will be held responsible. Of course. I hope I do not regret this. You won't. Will it make the nightmares go away? I do not know. But you can get rid of that envelope now. No, his salary. He has already taken it. Check the envelope and see. It, it hadn't left my sight all day. Where is this money? How? <laughs> Let me see it. My, my dear managers, pleasure doing business with you. Regards, Opera Ghost. A ghost? He is not a ghost. He is a man. A very dangerous man. Then this had better work. It will. It must. We are now on the grand staircase. What are you doing here? I have come to enjoy the opera. That is not why you are here. Do you really think this phantom of yours is ignorant to your plans? You know nothing of my plans. I know that you have a carriage waiting outside. Are you spying on I'm me? I'm taking care of you. I am no longer a child. You act like one. I knew I should not have told you about this. 
I thought you could help me. But all you've ever done is help yourself. You will obey me. Never again. Well, then you are no longer my brother. Have it your way. Raoul tries to force himself past Philippe, but Philippe throws him back. Raoul punches Philippe hard, Ooh. sending him to the ground. I am sorry, Philippe. I'm sorry you will never understand why I must go. Why? For love? Yes. This love of yours will kill you. Goodbye, brother. We are now in Christine's dressing room. You have to tell someone. You would not understand. Have you heard what people are saying? What? That you ran off with the V-count. That you're with child. That is not true. I know. I need to get ready, Meg. What are you hiding? Nothing! Get out of my dressing room! Not until you tell me the truth! Get out! Get out! Get out! I'm sorry. I'm worried about you. I'm sorry too, Meg. I... I... No. Come on. You do need to get ready. Someone has to sing Marguerite, even if Faust is a complete bore. Why do you say that? Well, Faust sells his soul to the devil for Marguerite, and in the end, she dies for it. Not very romantic. That is not how I see it at all. Her death shows Faust that his evils are not past redemption, that there is still hope. I think that is very romantic. Or foolish. Do you think she was afraid? Marguerite? Even though she had faith in herself, do you think she was still frightened? I would be. I'm scared, Meg. I'm so very scared. You have nothing to be afraid of. You know this role backwards. Now, I must go get ready myself. Wait, I, I want you to know that I love you very much. I love you too. Thank you, little Meg, for everything. Good luck tonight, Christine. Eric? Angel? Mademoiselle? Marie, what are you doing here? I see you are still talking to yourself. Carlotta, what do you want? Good luck tonight. What? You were born to play Margaret more than I ever was. But you... The doctor says you must rest your voice. <laughs> I'm fine. I told her not to come, but she insisted. Marie, you are too good to me. Indeed I am not. I knew I should have barred your doors. What would I do without you? I do not know. Illness is a strange thing. It has a way of revealing your true self and your true friends. If I had known, I, I would have... There is nothing you could have done. I probably deserved worse. I... Why are you telling me this? Because whoever did this to me, a maniac and opera ghost, I can tell by the look in your eyes that he owns you too. Yes, 
He does. I wanted you to know that you are not alone. And that I am excited to see this new Margarita. I hear she's quite good. Thank you, Carlotta. We'd better go to our May? Only if you promise to behave yourself. Behave myself? What would the opera be without a little mischief? <laughs> It was the most memorable performance ever played in the Paris Opera House. Christine sung with an almost suicidal abandon. Each word, each, each note was filled with an unnatural energy. Her voice mesmerized the audience so that they did not notice the lone dark figure taking the stage. A deep layer of mist fills the stage. I am sorry, Christine, but the music is over. The lights go dark and the phantom and Christine disappear into the mist. It was the phantom. He has taken her. Someone please help. Christine, Christine. They are gone. We must find her. Listen to me. I know where he has taken her. Who are you? Come, there is not much time. We are now in Christine's dressing room. He must have a trap door in here somewhere. There is nothing here. You do not know Eric as I do. So, you know his name? I know many things. Eric is a very dangerous man, but if you know where to look, his tricks are easy to find. The Persian presses a hidden lever, revealing a secret passageway. Who is he? We must go, now. I need to know. You need nothing. Raoul pulls out a revolver, pointing it at the Persian. Tell me now. You would shoot me? To save Christine, I would do anything. Good, then we may have a chance. Who are you? When I first met Eric, I was working as the Daroga, the chief of police for the Sultan of Mazenderan. The Sultan had purchased Eric from a traveling carnival to be his personal assassin. He'd become famous as an illusionist, hypnotist, composer, architect, and horrifying oddity. But he was also a gifted inventor of torture devices. I alone pitied him. He is a murderer. His sins do not define him. He should be locked up. He was. Then how did he escape? I set him free. Eric fell in love with the Sultan's daughter. He decided to reveal his feelings to her, but she laughed and cursed his grotesque visage. And in a fit of rage, he killed her. The Sultan ordered his execution, but I could not do it. I, I saw something in Eric, something buried deep within that gave me pause. So I faked his death and allowed him to escape. How could you? He promised me he would disappear. And he did for many years until the opera house was built. He made a deal with Charles Garnier to design the opera and was allowed to live in the darkness of the underground catacombs. I began hearing rumors of the phantom of the opera, but he had only ever been a rumor, a ghost until now. 
until Christine Dye brought him out of his shadows. And now he has taken her down into those shadows. I must warn you, to save Christine's life, we very well may be risking our own. Why should I trust you? In a blur of motion, the Persian grabs the gun from Raoul. Because you have no choice. The only way this gun is going to protect you is if you hold it like this. Why? The Punjab lasso, nearly invisible, Eric's weapon of choice. Now come and be prepared for the worst. We are in the Phantom's Lair. You must stop this. Me. You are not the Phantom you have created. What I am, I am. I have always been. And tonight, you sang for me. Me. No, Eric, I did not sing for you, or for Raoul, or even for my father. I sang for myself. I had forgotten how after my father died. You helped me to remember, and I love you for that. But I can never love you the way you want me to. You will love me, or blood will be on your hands. What are you talking about? Oh, oh, what? What? What was that? Eric? Barrels? Barrels? Any barrels to sell? Talk to me. You must decide. Do you marry the monster or kill the man? I do not understand. Barrels, Christine. Hundreds of them. What kind of barrels do you ask? Filled with water? Filled with wine? No, gunpowder. They await your decision. Marry me and the barrels stay silent. Refuse and they will erupt, sending the opera down into my underground hell. Eric, you must take off your mask. No, not that mask. The one you have hidden under your entire life. You will never find love under that mask. You would not have loved me like this. Not even my own mother could love me. She couldn't bear to look at me or even give me a name. Eric is a name I gave myself. I only wanted a kiss. Mother, please, I, I, I ask for so little. Please kiss me, embrace me, love me, but she, she, she wouldn't, she spat in my face. I, I, I held her tight, so very tight, she struggled at first, but eventually she was silent. And then all was silent. You were my last hope of freedom from this prison. You will marry me and- Raoul! Where are you? My dear, I believe we have a gentleman caller. And at this hour, I shall have to send him away at once. Eric, please. Oh, no, my love, you must stay here. You have much to consider. The phantom grabs Christine and throws her into her room and locks the door. Eric! Eric, let me go! We are now on the shore of the vast underground lake. Well, I, I know you're down here. This is where that, that phantom of yours lives, correct? Listen to reason, Raoul. You have created this phantom in your mind. Leave this place. Who's there? Who, who said that? Is that you, Raoul? You are not welcome here. Please do not throw away your life for that manipulative wench. How 
dares you? Oh, she may be pretty now, but she will soon turn ugly. You speak of ugliness as though you understand it. Do you wish to understand it? I will show you. Oh, dear Lord. Tell me, what do you see? No. No. No! The phantom flings the Punjab lasso around Philippe's neck. She's mine! Mine! She's mine! The lights fade as Philippe goes limp. We are back in the phantom's lair. I found it! Wait, Raoul! Christine? Christine! You fool! Raoul, is that you? Christine, where are you? Please, you must get out before he returns. Stand away from the door, Christine. <laughs> Wait, stop. He will hear. Raoul fires the gun, shattering the door handle. You should not have come. I could not leave you, Christine. I... We have had so many callers tonight, darling. Eric! The hour is growing late. Eric, do not do this. The Viscount here was trying to take her from me, Droga! Come out and face me, you coward! It is time for you to decide, Christine. Raoul spins toward him, brandishing the gun. The phantom reaches into his coat pocket, withdrawing his balled up fist. <sighs> Move any closer, and what's above will join us below. Raoul, stop! Put down the gun, Viscount. Now! Raoul slowly lowers the gun to the ground. After a moment's consideration, the phantom backhands Raoul, <laughs> knocking him unconscious. No! So what will it be? My love, will you marry me? Will you send us all to hell? Wait. Yes. Yes, my dear. Please stop. You win. I'm yours. The phantom opens his hand to Christine, revealing the engagement ring. She takes it and slides it onto her finger. There is one condition. Here's the thing. Hello. You must take off your mask. <laughs> Could you deny your bride a kiss? <laughs> Eric, please. The phantom thinks for a moment and then, with hesitation, removes his mask. Dear God! Poor, unhappy Eric. Christine takes the phantom's face in her hands and kisses his forehead. No matter what mask you wear, you will always be my angel of music. Raoul frantically retrieves the discarded revolver. No! No, Christine! Get away from him! Raoul, no! The phantom grapples with Raoul, struggling for control of the gun. Eric! Stop it! In the struggle, the gun is fired. Bang! The deadening sound echoes in the darkness. Christine steps back awkwardly, clutching her stomach. The stray bullet has found its mark. Christine! Christine! No! What? You... God! Get away from her! You took her from me! The phantom attacks Raoul, wrapping the Punjab lasso around his neck. Stop it, Eric! Eric! Christine. Do you see it now? What? What? I'm not afraid. Marguerite was not afraid.
Everything will be all right, Christine. I will take you to the hospital and... Carl, bring me to the lake. But we have to get to the... You must fetch my scarf. Yes. Yes. Do you hear it? What? Violin music inexplicably begins playing. Can you hear it? Father has come for me. Yes, I can. I can hear it, Christine. It is so beautiful. As if from heaven. Father? Angel? Christine fades away in Raoul's arms. Come. I will take you to the lake. Nobody has ever kissed me before. Drug me. No one has come. That's all I'm so happy to see that. <laughs> Eric, I'm here. You're right. Look, I am dying. I thought Christine would save me. Perhaps she did. Eric. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Don't, don't. I don't deserve it. I deserve only shadows. I always have. Promise me that you will bury me by the lake. Music from above always sounds so beautiful from there. I will. Let me go. I wish to be alone. Are you sure? I have faced my life alone. I will welcome death the same way. Goodbye. My friend. The phantom's strength wanes and flickers in his cold, unfeeling kingdom. Slowly, he collapses. The stage is silent. Christine enters, shiny. She holds Lon Chaney's makeup box in her hand. Are you ready? <laughs> Christine hands him the makeup box. The phantom reaches out to embrace Christine, but she is gone. The phantom is alone. As the lights fade to darkness, he begins removing his makeup. <clears throat> The ghost in the Paris Opera existed. He was not, as was long believed, a, a delusion concocted by the patrons of the Opera House. Count Philippe de Chagny's body was discovered on the shore of the Rue Creed, his death remaining a mystery. Many believed that Christine and Raoul traveled north and, and lived out their lives in peace, far from the phantom of the Opera. I, I only wish it were true. The light crossfade to the empty stage of the Paris Opera House, summer 1924. Lon continues to remove his makeup, placing the face of the phantom back into the box. So what happened to Raoul? The Arctic vessel Proteus set sail for San Francisco that summer as part of the Lady Franklin Bay expedition. Oh my God, the, uh, the Lady Franklin, that was the... Uh, he spent three years stranded in the Arctic wasteland. 
and was one of only seven survivors. For 20 years, he wandered the world. And while living in Russia, he met a French journalist covering the, the first revolution. On January 22nd of that year, during a peaceful march on the palace, 200 people were shot down by the palace guards, a French journalist among them. His name was Gaston Leroux. What? January 22nd has been a pivotal day in my life. It ushered in the end of one life and the beginning of another. I don't understand. Philippe was wrong. Love did not kill me. It killed Christine. Eric and I thought our love for her meant that she belonged to us. We could not see past our own deformities and, and, and she paid for it. So I, I, I traveled the world looking for death, looking for that bullet that was meant for me, looking for the way to kill that vain and jealous Viscount who watched his lover die in his arms. So maybe Philippe was right after all. In a way, love did kill me. Raoul. Yes. You know the truth now. Uh, the whole story. Gene does not even know. It's a secret I kept buried deep within. That, but I knew that the story had to be told, so I, I wrote the novel, a, a love story where good triumphs over evil. But, but good and evil wear many masks. One may hide the other, the other may reveal the truth. So I gave Christine the, the happy ending she deserved. What do I do now? Go back to Hollywood. End your movie with, a, with an elaborate and exciting chase scene, make, me, make your monster. How can I create a monster now that I know the truth? I wrote that I found the skeleton of a deformed creature once known as Eric buried by the side of that underground lake, and that is true. What I did not write is that buried next to him are the remains of a young girl wearing an engagement ring who had the voice of an angel. The Persian and I buried them there so that they could always hear the sounds of the lake and, and then the music above. Their love story in life was dark and, and, and full of shadows, but in death, their love story is eternal. So go. Become the demon that audiences want to see. Terrify, horrify, frighten us all with the story of a living corpse. Because the true story of the Phantom of the Opera is far more frightening. I will. Ah, I will. <sighs> Raul? Yes? You're wrong. Love did not kill you. It saved you. I think Christine knew that. And I think Jean should know that too. You two are still at it? Actually, I was about to leave. Oh no, I was hoping to show you the new dress I bought. It's in the carriage outside. Why don't I escort you there and you can show it to me before I leave. That would be wonderful. Shall we then? You are doing it again. Hmm? You have that far off look on your face. Still working on that story? Yes, I, uh, I think I am. So, are you going to tell me about it? Tell you? The story. Yes, the whole story.
All right, thank you guys so much. Round of applause for our actors. Thank you guys so much. I hope you all enjoyed the show and thank you for all the actors for coming together to re record this virtual stage reading. Once again, please visit dogstorytheater.com and click that donate button. Stay safe, stay healthy, and please don't kidnap any opera singers. <laughs> oh, there goes my weekend plans. <laughs> any more opera singers.